You guys ever been using Pro Tools and you find yourself digging through menus or being frustrated trying to find something just to do a simple action or pop open a window? Well, this video is for you because this is one of my favorite features in Pro Tools. I'm gonna walk you through how to create your own custom shortcuts. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna do a quick fire list of my 10 favorite custom keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so here we are in Pro Tools. Unfortunately, because of my screen resolution, you won't be able to see my menu bar, but if you go to Setup in your own menu bar, and towards the bottom there, it says Keyboard Shortcuts, I believe the default key command is Control-Shift-K. I actually have mine set to Claw-K, just because I find it easier. But this is what the window is gonna pop up and show you. Now, I already have 67 custom keyboard shortcuts. I use this feature a lot. Like I said, it's one of my favorites and it's a great way to save time. So I'm gonna go over just a little bit about this window and how to use it. So up here at the top, I think I'm gonna go back to factory default. So this is what you'll see. I can scroll down. There are hundreds of assignable options here things that can be assigned to keyboard shortcuts, as well as all of the current defaults. Now, the whole point of this is to help save you time. So I typically don't change that many existing keyboard shortcuts because I've been using Pro Tools for years and years, and a lot of those things are already in my muscle memory. However, what I do want to reach for are things that have not had assignable keyboard shortcuts in the past. This is gonna be my way of saving time so I no longer have to dig through a menu. So we're gonna do one of them that I use all the time, which is copy pan automation. Okay, so as you can see, it says none here under the key combination, uh, but if I just double click on this, I can assign whatever keyboard shortcut I want to it. Now, personally, for copy pan automation, it's easy for, for me to remember, I do control P. The first thing that we're gonna notice is that as soon as I hit control P, there's a conflict that comes up here. That is because control P is already assigned to move edit insertion up. Now, the thing is I work with my edit window focus always on, like this, this, little key up here is always yellow. So I know that to move my edit insertion up and down, I don't even have to hit control, just regular P and regular semicolon will go up and down. Therefore, it's not a problem for me in my particular use to resolve this. Now what that means is if I hit resolve, it is going to remove the keyboard shortcut from move edit up and down and assign it to copy pan automation, which is what I've just selected here. If I hit the reset button, it's gonna put it back to default, but we'll notice down here, the custom keyboard shortcut still says that I have one. And that's because if I go to move edit up, it has still removed the key combination of control P, right? Now, like I said, I use the edit window focus, so I'm not worried about this. So for me, I'm happy to do copy pan automation as control P, okay? Um, now there's a couple of cool things about this window. So obviously right here, we've got our search. I can type in the name of any command that I'm looking for. And if it happens to be assignable in this list, it will come up. So for example, this is copy pan automation. There's also copy all automation. So this is one that I like to assign as well. And same thing, I can double click here. Let's just do it. I do control A for copy all. And trim clip to start to cursor. Again, I use this edit window focus. That's just A. I don't need the control modifier on it. So I can hit resolve. Now I've got a key command for that as well. So control P and control A are going to save me a lot of time because previously I would have had to go up to edit and then scroll down to copy special pan automation. Now, one of the cool things that you can see here is that in edit copy special pan automation and all automation, you can see that control P and control A show up so that if you ever do need to remember, you can look at the menu items and it will show you what you've assigned as well. So that's super helpful. So now instead of digging through a menu, I can just double click on my clip, control P, and now I can paste it elsewhere. 
Okay, I'm just gonna show you a few more things about this window that are really helpful. Let's say that you don't know exactly what an action is called, but maybe you know the keyboard shortcut to something. Well, you can do search by key, and now it's going to essentially start listening for your keystrokes, and it will pull up whatever you've assigned. So if I do control A, for example, well, there's copy all automation. The other cool and useful part about this is that if you're unsure of what to assign to a key and whether or not it will have a conflict and you want to know that beforehand, you can do that. Like I could have checked, well, what, what utilizes control A? And so I'll do control A, copy all automation does now, and horizontal zoom to show all has that combined along with the shift modifier. And then there's also super useful filters in here. So we can do shift control. So all of the modifiers that use shift and control are now listed here. We can do command and control and all of those keyboard shortcuts are listed here. So super useful. And then focus it are, is gonna show me single keystrokes that can take place when my edit window focus mode is engaged. And then I can look at any conflicts that exist and I can look at only my custom ones that I've assigned. So here we'll see copy all automation and copy pan automation, because those are my custom shortcuts, as well as the ones that I removed the previous keys from. Now, one last useful thing I wanna show you about this before I tell you about my favorite keyboard shortcuts, and that is that if you are working on your home system and you are very used to your own custom keyboard shortcuts, and let's say you have to go to somebody else's studio and sit down at Pro Tools and start working, you probably wanna take those keyboard shortcuts with you. Thankfully, Avid have made it really easy here. So what you can do is you can go up to here. It's gonna say factory default, even after you've made custom keyboard shortcuts. So what we wanna do is save a custom keyboard profile. We're gonna click up here, we're gonna do save settings as, and then by default, it's gonna to go to Pro Tools, Pro Tools presets, keyboard shortcuts, and it's gonna save inside this folder, which can be located inside your documents folder. So I'm gonna save this as keyboard shortcut tutorial and hit save. And there we have it. So now in Finder, if we click on Pro Tools, Pro Tools presets, keyboard shortcuts, Here's the ones I just saved. So I can just drag this onto a flash drive or email it to myself and my keyboard shortcuts will be right there at my disposal. Okay, so as promised, I'm now gonna walk you through my 10 favorite custom keyboard shortcuts, excluding copy all pan automation and copy all automation because I already showed you that in the demo, but those are definitely on the list otherwise. Okay, so this first one is super simple. Let's say you've got a clip that's got a bunch of fades on it and you need to take this apart and rebuild it. It can be really annoying to go through and individually delete all these fades. What I like to do is just highlight all of these and hit control F. And the keyboard shortcut for that one was delete fades. One of my next favorite ones is for duplicate tracks. I will do control option command which we also call claw. When you do all three of the bottom modifier keys like that, it's called claw. I do claw D and that pulls open my duplicate tracks window. And the keyboard shortcut for that one is duplicate track. Okay, the next one, and this is arguably one of my favorites because I use it all the time. To activate and deactivate tracks, I use claw A. And just like that, I can hold down claw and hit A and hit A again, and it toggles between the active and inactive state. So the keyboard command for this one is selected tracks, make active and inactive. And it's one keyboard shortcut and it's a toggle. I like to assign keyboard shortcuts for windows that I need to pop open frequently. One of them being the IO window. So I do claw I. You'll notice I use claw a lot because claw isn't assigned by default to a lot of shortcuts. So it tends to be open in combination with a lot of the other keys. So claw I is easy for me to remember. It pulls open the IO window. And the command for that is I slash O setup. Another window I like to pop open frequently is preferences. I do this with command comma. This is how a ton of other apps are set up by default. So this one's a no brainer for me. The next one, and this is another favorite of mine, the color palette window. I access the color palette all the time. So I do command numeric zero and the shortcut for that is color palette. Another one that I have to do frequently on a mix stage when I'm delivering ads back and forth is save copy in, which I have as claw S. That opens up the save copy in window. The keyboard shortcut for that is save copy in. 
Okay, another huge time saver for me. I almost always have my tracks in this touch latch mode, which means if I start to write some automation, it's gonna prime, right? So if I make a selection and start to write some automation, I can do claw W for write to selection, and it is going to write the automation that I have done to the selection, right? So normally this is found by opening up the automation window, which can be done via command numeric four, and it's this button right here, right automation to selection. So it's important to note that if I make a selection like this, and I pull this guy down, and then I write it, you'll see it's gonna write only to the length of the selection. This is super great for writing quick automation. You can set your settings quickly, make a selection, and hit write to, and you don't have to hit play and wait for it to get to the end of the selection. And the keyboard shortcut for that is write automation to selection. Within this same neighborhood of shortcuts for automation, I like to be able to toggle preview. So let me open up this automation window again. So instead of having to open this window and click this, I do control shift P and I can toggle it on and off with that. And the keyboard shortcut for that is Automation Preview. And last but not least, a few versions of Pro Tools ago, Avid was kind enough to give us multiple marker lanes. Now, at the moment, you have to go up here in this corner, click this little window, and you have to check mark these on or off. But as I said, I do not like diving through menus, so I assigned F1 through F5 to be each individual marker lane. So F1 is marker lane one. F2 is marker lane two, and so on and so forth. And that way I can quickly access all of my marker lanes and I can very quickly get rid of them or open them back up just by using my F keys. And the shortcut for that is gonna be edit window show ruler and there's markers one, two, three, four, and five. So there you have it. This feature is all about saving time inside of Pro Tools. The less time that we're digging through menus, the less times I have to take my hands off the mouse and I can just leave them in a rested position on the keyboard and I can be typing keyboard shortcuts instead of digging through menus. I am cumulatively saving so much time over the days, weeks, and months that I spend working. And remember, it's not even just about saving time. The other thing that this allows us to do is to stay in a creative flow. When the technology becomes transparent to us and we don't have to dig through menus for things, it allows us to stay in the creative zone and to operate with muscle memory alone. I hope you learned something here. Comment below your favorite custom keyboard shortcuts and also let me know what other topics you'd like me to discuss on this channel as well. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I've got lots more content coming. Thanks for watching.